Hello traders and welcome aboard. I'm Ken Calhoun from TradeMastery.com with a channel that's dedicated to helping you become more successful in your trades. In this episode, we're going to look at the do's and don'ts of professional day trading. Let's start off with timing because that's so important. You know, a lot of traders will sit there and try and trade all week long, all day long, and that's a waste of time. The best time to trade is the opening range breakouts from right after the 9.30 opening bell up until 10 o'clock or slightly after 10. The best days of week to day trade, at least the stock market, is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Times not to trade, because that's do trade, 9.30 to 10 maybe 10.15, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. The times to completely avoid trading are gonna be your Mondays and Fridays. My Wall Street guys, the professional traders, we call those shoulder days. And that's because people take vacations, uh, three-day weekends on Mondays and Fridays. Similarly, trading the day before or after three-day weekends or holiday weekends is also a terrible idea because that's when people are taking vacations and trading volume and volatility are less likely to work out for you. So that's an important tip. It's also important to scan visually through your charts before the opening bell and have a daily trading plan established well ahead of 9.30. I usually start at 8.30, 8.45. And what I look for are the previous day's gainers, which stocks had the biggest gains in the prior day, and also the current day's pre-market gaps. So whatever is gapping in the pre-market, as well as whatever ran the most yesterday, becomes the beginning of our trading plan for each day. Professional, sensible, active intraday trading is all about having a trading plan developed before the opening bell, which is what professional institutional traders and pros like myself do. So have at least three to five stocks that have either gaps or previous days wide ranges established well before the opening bell. I teach how to do that in my live trading room at Trading the Open. Dot com. But that's something you really need to do that differentiates beginners from professionals. What you don't do is wait until after 9.30 and then frantically scan through the leaderboard to see what's running because then you end up chasing stocks too late. And that's a big fail mode. I used to do that back in the 90s. I'd wait until the opening bell to start my day uh, armed with lots of coffee and current market scanners. And what I found the hard way the last 20 years is it's much smarter and works out much better potentially to have your pre-market gap list, your focus list, kind of your daily watch list or your focus list identified before the opening bell. So that way you can spend your time on trade management with entries and exits, how to scale, how to get out of trades if they go against you uh, once the market starts to open instead of trying to find what's worth trading after 9.30. And that leads me to my next tip, which is very important, and that's you cannot make it as a day trader. You absolutely cannot make it as a day trader if you're only trying to trade a single instrument or one or two stocks or E-minis or Forex pairs or whatever. You need to diversify. It's all about the numbers and very tight risk management. I'll often trade anywhere from three to half a dozen stocks on the open uh, and scale in and out of those based on which ones are starting to break out. Now, yes, it does take a little more energy and work, but you cannot make it as a day trader if you're only following one or two stocks because often that one or two stock may do a false breakout or chop around and go sideways. And if you've ever been frustrated with that, uh, the key is to diversify like any smart portfolio manager would, any of my institutional guys. You're always uh, spraying out a handful of orders, seeing which ones catch hold and start to work out. That becomes your winner list, the ones that start to hit but then go sideways or stop out. Those are the ones that are small stops. And the difference between the two is really that you've got to trade a handful of instruments. Now, there's a point of diminishing return. You don't want to trade 20 or 30 instruments in a morning unless you're a veteran day trader. I've traded dozens in a single day. Uh, but there's kind of a point of diminishing return. And I think that what you'll find in your own trade experience is that if you focus to maybe half a dozen, three, four, five, six instruments that you trade each morning that you trade, uh, you can potentially do much better as an active trader. And that brings me to the next point. When it comes to trade management, the worst possible way to day trade 
is to trade many E-mini futures contracts, like 8 or 16 or 30 contracts, or trading thousands of shares of a cheap under $10 stock. That is destined for failure, and the reason is because your upfront risk is too high. What you do not do is trade 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 shares of a $3 stock trying to get 10 or 20 cents out of it. You'll just blow up your trading account that way. I can't tell you how many horror stories I hear from traders around the world that tell me they've blown up their accounts with cheap stocks. And the reason is uh, you've got to trade thousands of shares that brings your risk level way up through the roof. So think about it. If you're trading, say, 3,000 shares of, say, a $5 stock, uh, and you put on a 3,000 share order, uh, and it goes even 10 cents against you, that's you're down $300 right out of the gate. If it goes 20 cents against you, you're down $600 before you know what hits you. And you have enough $600 hits in your account, and that starts whittling down or grinding down your day trading account. It makes much more sense to not trade the under $10 small cap stocks. And by the way, ask any professional Wall Street market maker, any pro trader, they'll say small cap crap, right? Or they use more colorful words than that, but you get what I you understand my point. Uh, small caps are the refuge of, say, broke college kids or people who are undercapitalized or, or unprofessional traders uh, that are speculators. And you should not be day trading cheap stocks because if you're wrong, even 10 or 20 cents on thousands of shares, which is all you can get, you know, if you're trading a, the reason is if you're trading a under $10 stock, those very seldom run more than 30 or 40 cents, and usually they'll only go 10 or 20 cents. So if you see these guys who make up these phony YouTube videos trying to claim to make thousands of dollars trading cheap stocks, they'll say, well, I'm in thousands of shares, and now it's up 10 cents, and I'm taking profit. That's not how it works for the real traders uh, for real trader that's with the sim account or demo account it looks good on paper but with real money day trading and you have my word i'm a one of the world's top day trading experts i founded the original day trading university back in the year 1999 and i run trademastery.com uh, you will find that trading thousands of shares of cheap stocks is destined for failure what you want is the exact opposite not really super expensive stocks like the fang Facebook, uh, Netflix, Google, the over $100 stocks. What makes sense is to trade just a few hundred shares, maybe three, four hundred shares at a time with four or five, six different trades for stocks that I like to trade in the 20, 30, $40 a share range that have a good profit potential of up to 50 or 80 cents. Maybe we settle for 20 or 30 cents for trades that don't work out, uh, but we want to go for 50, 60, 70 cent wins on several hundred shares instead of several thousand shares. It makes so much more sense to trade, say, you know, let's say uh, 100 shares even of a uh, $30 stock than 1,000 shares of a $3 stock because the volatility and the upfront risk involved. And that's what I call trading wide, not deep, right? Trading deep foolishly in a way that blows up your trading account is trading small cap, under $10, low float, thinly traded stocks with widespreads that are pop and drop, cheap stocks that are dangerous. That's what you should not do as a trader. Another quick point, uh, I get a lot of questions about e-mini futures day trading. I think that unless you're in a rally market, trading futures contracts is a horrible idea. And the reason is because they're very choppy. As you know, I'm recording this here in late June 2017. We've had a typical sideways choppy market the last two months. I'm confident that e-mini traders are getting killed out there. They're getting slaughtered because uh, the market won't run more than three, four, five, six ticks in a row before chopping back down. Which means again, the same fatal flaw or bad thinking. Be a critical thinker. I used to be a corporate statistician for the Ford Motor Company. I'm a professional data expert. I know numbers and data and charts and the rest of it. Look at what happens over the long haul, what, what the average performance of specific strategies are. And what you want to stay away from are strategies that require you to have large upfront risk with choppy instruments. That means cheap stocks or e-mini futures in choppy markets. There is a good point to be made that it takes more work to do it my way. We do have to spend more time scanning visually through charts. The way to front load that is to do your scanning and your trade setup before the opening bell. So you're not under time pressure. I mean, you got to get your work done before 9.30, but start at 8.39. Look for your pre-market gappers and previous day's wide open range breakout or wide range stock charts and ETF charts makes a lot more sense. 
The problem with E-mini futures contracts trading is that in range-bound markets, those instruments are, I won't say guaranteed to fail, but uh, much lower odds trades because you got to trade heavy contract size just to get a few ticks out of it. Uh, and that's a failing approach to trade. So you should not be all eager to day trade the E-mini futures, uh, despite what the educators in that sector uh, tell you. The truth of the matter is just look at a two-day chart of your ES, you know, your E-mini futures contracts, and look at how choppy those charts are. Compare that with the types of charts I like to trade, where you've got nice gap continuations for, say, a $20, $30 stock that actually runs 80 cents or a dollar before it stalls out, maybe at a whole number, okay? So minimize your upfront risk. So do not, a don't in day trading is large upfront risk on choppy instruments. That's the worst way to day trade. You know, I'll tell you the truth. Uh, it's been unfortunate, but since the year 2008, when, you know, the market had sold off and the economy tanked, there's been a proliferation of what I call fool's gold out there. Things that look cheap to the eye. Like a $3 stock is cheaper to trade than a $30 stock. Yeah, but look at the numbers behind the trade potential. And what you find is it's a, the fatal flaw is, always look for the fatal flaw in any trading strategy. The fatal flaw of cheap, uh, cheap stocks or e-mini futures for that matter is that you have to absorb way too much upfront risk and new traders will stop out most of the time and it grinds down their trading accounts and they blow up. And that's the truth of the matter. I hear, you know, I hear I've got the industry zero. I've been in this business nearly 20 years. And I hear from so many traders of their own personal horror stories of losing a fortune with cheap stocks or futures trading and the rest of it. So like I always like to say, stop the madness. There's got to be a better way. It's uh, the smart thing is to paper trade and test until you're consistently successful with your paper trading. So you can hammer out a strategy that works. If you were to make a quadrant, if I were to make a box, you know, of, you know, high, high size and choppy instruments, that's the worst quadrant. The best quadrant would be strong instruments on small size with tight stops, right? That's the correct way to day trade the market. So think about the differences sequentially about what you can trade and how you can make it work for you. Always look at the upfront risk of any trading strategy. That's a key point. So do look at upfront risk. Uh, by the way, a quick tip that I'm sure the educators of the choppy instruments don't want me to share with you, to disguise the fact that their instruments are so horrible, terrible idea to trade, they'll often use black back, be on the watch out for, uh, look out for black background charts that are zoomed in closed. That way it kind of obfuscates or, or obscures the fact that it's such a horrible instrument. You know, if you zoom in, you know, real close to a choppy, you know, $3 stock that runs 20 cents, it'll look like it's a big move. What I want you to do is put it under the light of day, kind of like shine a spotlight on it. Pull up that same chart in your own software using a two-day chart where you can see the actual range and use a white background chart so you can see with the candlestick. So you can see uh, candlestick patterns on a two-day chart and you can see the validity or lack of validity of the instruments in terms of, you know, Volatility, by validity I mean is it valid to trade? Could you actually make money trade the instrument? And if you look at the majority of these charts under that spotlight, look at a two-day chart, you'll see that most of them have such tight ranges like E-mini futures contracts. Now it is worth trading things like futures contracts and the index tied ETFs like spiders and diamonds and Qs. We never run away rally market or big sell-off market, which we may come up to at some point soon. Uh, but barring a strong trending market, you should not be trading cheap instruments or index tied instruments because the index is going to sideways, so is that instrument. So you're not going to have an edge or an advantage when it comes to trading it. So that's an important takeaway. Another quick tip is do not spend thousands of dollars on overpriced courses. I've seen courses priced as high as $2,000 or $3,000. And I don't care if it's a you know, if they put it on sale, it's still a bunch of hooey for the most part, not worth thousands of dollars for training. Anybody that tries to put a hand in your wallet asking for thousands of dollars up front should not be trusted, particularly people in the trading education industry, which has a lot of snake oil salesmen and unauthentic, dishonest people that just want your money. Instead, learn for as uh, little upfront cost as you can and do not buy proprietary indicators. Kind of a trick is what they, what they are hoping you do is you know, you spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on special software or special indicators, and then you're kind of handcuffed or tied to that educator. They want to make you think that, 
well, you know, you're throwing good money after bad, and that's a bad idea. You know, they want you to spend thousands of dollars so you're emotionally invested in that, even if it's a failing strategy, and then you keep throwing a money pit, right? You keep throwing good money after bad with educators that don't work. And so anybody that asks for a lot of money up front or even offers for sale courses that cost thousands of dollars should definitely not be trusted, right? Use common sense. Learn during free or low cost trials and see if it works for you personally. And test out a number of different people. Test out my live room, test out other people out there. See what's the best fit for you. Okay, now I like to focus on intelligent, well thought out, specific entry and exits uh, identified ahead of time so people know exactly what to look for and exactly how to manage an entry and exit once they get into it. We don't just willy nilly jump into a $3 stock that's running and go in thousands of shares that's a failing strategy. You have my word on that. That does not work. Ask to see the tax returns, the Schedule D tax returns, uh, or the, or at least the trading portion of the tax return of anybody who claims to be making a fortune trading penny stocks or three or four dollar stocks. You're not going to see it. You know, professional traders. Ask any Wall Street guy, any any of my professional guys, a hedge fund trader, a prop shop trader. Uh, they do not trade, uh, by and large, they mostly don't trade small caps or cheap stocks because that's not where the odds are. That's not where significant money flows. That's where speculators try and jump in and out quickly and usually blow up their trading accounts. So, you know, it's a smart idea to take your time and learn very intelligently, very step-by-step -step process uh, instead of speculative pop and drop stocks. So those are some do's and don'ts when it comes to professional day trading. Make sure you're looking at instruments in the first place that have wide trading ranges that you can trade with minimal upfront risk uh, in a sensible, well thought out manner so that you're trading a handful. You're not just trading one or two instruments and pin all your hopes on that and go deep with thousands of shares in some cheap stock or dozens of contracts in some e mini futures contract day trading room. That's how people lose money. Uh, it's very smart to simply paper trade and test out for yourself the validity and the integrity, the authenticity, the honesty of whoever you're learning from. And what you will learn is that by and large, you want to focus on small size trades with large trending instruments that are in the 20, 30, 40, maybe $50 a share range where you can get 50, 60, 70 cents out of it. Not over trading cheap stocks or also not spending too much money on the over $100 stocks because those also have uh, not the percentage of change is not as good on those either. Anyway, I'm Ken Calhoun from Day Trading University and TradeMastery.com. That's what I've learned since the late 90s as a professional and I hope that it can help you in your trades as well. So until next time, trade with passion or at least with some excited energy. Uh, trade with really tight stops. Uh, try to make as much money as you can and lose as little as possible as you pursue your, uh, your goals and efforts to be more successful in your trades. Until next time, uh, trade well and uh, leave a comment in the space below if you want. Be sure to subscribe to this channel if you're not already subscribed and visit my site at TradeMastery.com for even more. Goodbye all.